Hello, uh, welcome to this technology and market briefing being provided by Dometic to uh, new truck dealers. My name is Pedro Soto. Today I will be your host and facilitator. Joining me is Fernando Mejia, a 20-year veteran of the industry who is the expert analyst presenting this briefing today. Fernando, welcome. Please tell us about Dometic, uh, its trucking business, and about your background for the benefit of our viewers. Sure. Good morning, Pedro. Um, Dometic, it's a company that it's been for a long time. Um, we primarily uh, focus on comfort products such as AC and refrigerators. Um, we are a worldwide company. Um, we have different divisions such as RV, marine, uh, lodging, and obviously truck. Um, when it comes to truck, we are the leading supplier of engine of auxiliary AC systems and components. We are already approved with all major programs such as Freightliner, International, Volvo, uh, Peterbilt, and uh, all those products have some of uh, all those companies have some sort of product at an OEM level, and uh, we also cater to some of the aftermarket arms. And um, anything that we do, whether it's marine, truck, RB, it has very rigorous manufacturing procedures. We strive to be the best at what we do and create a product that really meets the demand of our consumers. As far as myself, I've been working in aftermarket for nearly 20 years, whether it's automotive or heavy duty like truck, and I'm constantly um, visiting dealers and truck outfits and talking to people about the industry and the different options and work. what do we need to do next to stay afloat. Excellent. Thank you for that introduction and background, Fernando. Now let's move on right now to the agenda because we are going to be <clears throat> brief and uh, we promise to be a 15-minute briefing and that's what we want to do. So uh, tell us the three areas that we're going to cover today. The three areas that we're going to cover are the trends driving the demand for auxiliary AC systems, um, the business case for truck owners, and how to profit from these trends, you being a dealer. Okay? Very good. So the, the trends that we have going on, obviously the first one is the economics. Um, every truck driver nowadays or every fleet, they realize that with upcoming costs or rising cost of fuel, um, there's only so much room, there's a lot more competition, um, there's, more, there's not enough drivers out there. So it makes it think of, you know, really be frugal and really make, use, pro make proper use of their money. The other part that we have is the reg regulatory part. Currently, we have seven states. We're idling at a truck stop. We're not being moving product. It's banned, completely banned. And there is a very likely possibility that this is going to go federal if everything goes through. Um, and then the third one is comfort and driver retention. Um, truck drivers that can't sleep well or those fleets that provide trucks to drivers that have TVs and microwaves and auxiliary AC systems so the time that they're off the road they can really be comfortable tend to stay for a longer period of time with fleet companies. So those are the basic forces that are making this a growing industry, very fast growing industry. There's a lot of taboos and a lot of questions and a lot of expectations based on this new uh, trend that we're seeing, okay? Now, in, in the regulatory area, tell us a little bit about the, the risks or the exposure that uh, companies and truck drivers themselves have if they're caught idling in states that you're not supposed to be idling. <clears throat> One of the main changes that is being faced right now by the Department of Transportation is, in the past, whoever the truck owner was, if the truck was not 100% legal or was doing that was not meeting the specs or the regulations, the fine traditionally would go to the business owner, to the fleet, to the third party. So truck drivers were very loose, they just wanted to get moving. Now the FDOT, it's imposing the fines directly to the drivers and tagging them to their licenses. So that's making the drivers not want to risk their licenses and making sure the trucks are 100%. The second part of it is um, states like California that we know they're the most rigorous, 
if you were to stop at a truck stop, they have agents at the moment because they're being very hard on it. They'll give you 15 minutes, and then they'll show up and say, you've been running for more than 15 minutes. This is against the law. This is your first warning. Here's $500 fine. Second fine, I think it goes up to 1500 And uh, more than second, it's up to the um, officer that it's imposing the fine. He might be able to um, take care of uh, withhold the truck. Wow. So they're getting serious. They really want to <clears throat> reduce the emissions and, and, and force truck drivers to not idle when they're stopping. Excellent. Now, you, you've you mentioned an example in the area of comfort and driver retention, one of the carriers out there. I think it was consolidated, or, or I don't remember what. Uh, uh, they're yeah. actually using this as a, as a recruiting tactic. Please tell, share with us. Well, Schneider is probably one of the largest fleets in the country. And uh, when this was in baby steps three, four, five years ago, they looked at it and they said, well, I don't know if we're really going to save that much money. Then, um, as of last year, anytime they go to a trade show or any sort of recruiting, one of their banners, their main flags is any driver that signs up with them will be put in a truck that will have auxiliary AC systems or APU. <coughs> They don't mention TVs, they don't mention coffee makers, they don't mention anything else. They mention auxiliary ACs and APUs. Excellent. So now let's let's dive down into what the business case starts to look like for truck owners and operators. Correct. And, and start looking at the at, at the specific uh, numbers and, and, and things that are involved and see what how big a problem it is for these folks. So well, like I said, you know, whether if it's a one man show or a fleet, there's, they're both our businesses on wheel. That's what it is. Um, so their focus, it's more and more the bottom line. Back in the day, a small truck driver would think, you know, I'm getting money in, so I'll be able to pay my bills, and I know I'm going to have some left. And they were very loose. You know, they just wanted to get moving. Now they know that if they don't take care of their fuel and their route and they're not careful with it, at the end of the week, they're going to be in the negative. We also know that the fuel is, keeps going up and keeps going up and they keep putting taxes. There's no real alternative for other technologies like LPG. Uh, the clean, clean diesel uh, trend that we see, it's not as strong as they want it to. And the other thing too is service. You know, Every time the truck idles, it's more hours of wear and tear on the engine that are unnecessary. So if you um, go by what the EPA has done as far as the study, um, they're averaging one gallon per hour when you're idling. You know, any barriers from truck to truck, how well tuned they are and how well maintained they are. But if you go about eight hours of idle time with a minimum of 150 hours a day of operating days in a year, plus the additional maintenance that you're putting for every eight hours, you're very easily land anywhere close to the $10,000 mark. If you save on on your maintenance, you're probably operating 250. You know, if you're operating 200, you might be idling 12 hours a day. So that we've seen numbers: minimum $7,500 a year, up to $13,500 a year in in idling cost. And so, if we say an average of $10,000 a year, how does that become a $30,000 problem to uh, per truck? Well, the reality is, is most trucks that they last the way that they're leased or bought. Most of them will reach the million mark mile, the million mark mile, which is when they traditionally get trade in or sold to a secondary uh, company, and they'll renew again. So those three years are the key first three years of that truck, because you're um, those are the years you're gonna try to use it the most. Got for it. Long hauls. Okay, so so there's a thirty thousand dollar problem that truck drivers, truck owners fleet owners and operators are waking up to and realizing obviously that creates a profit opportunity so how do dealers profit from these trends well if you already understand that there's people that are going to want to buy these product or a product that fits those needs any truck dealer has an, uh, an option to an OEM supplier you can buy the truck that already comes with it you can also buy some kit probably and put it in existing trucks, but they tend to be even more expensive. Um, 
we, you have the aftermarket option, which is where we fit. You can buy the product. You can fit it to your customer because it's an aftermarket application. There's more flexibility with it. Um, or you can just simply bypass it, and that truck driver that is determined against something, he'll find a dealer or a shop that will end up installing an auxiliary AC system. Okay. So, so what we're saying is, in general, you, dealers have two options position themselves to to be in place and benefit and profit from this trend or do, or do nothing and let the business go to other shops and other uh, companies correct now that's what I mentioned first there's a lot of um, questions and a lot of different expectations back based on lack of knowledge the reality of it is on how these systems perform and what are they are designed to do and what limitations exist based on the type of product that it is. So traditionally, <clears throat> if you buy an OEM product as a dealer, you're going to pay about $1.30 per BTU. Most products, the most common products, have anywhere between seven and 8,000 BTU. So if you do the math, uh, an auxiliary AC system, it's right around $10,000 if you right. do math quickly. So you might get about 1,000 out of it. The benefit of it is, it comes like that from the factory, theoretically, you're just collecting a profit. Um, now, on the aftermarket, if you do the same numbers, you can be extremely competitive. You open the door for other uh, upfitting options like upgrading alternators, upgrading batteries, um, different things that will generate additional revenue, but you also profit a lot more than you would do with an OEM. Um, the main challenge for most dealers is, like I say, they don't know the difference, they don't know those options. Um, so there's this big stigma or there's big fear that these AC systems can, are complicated, that are difficult, that they don't work as well. But the reality of it is, um, in the case of our product, it's very simple to install. It has very good performance. Um, we have a service network nationwide that could service the truck, whether it's at the dealer that they bought it, or anywhere in the U.S. and Canada that they're driving. Um, so it really, once you see the numbers by numbers, it makes no sense to continue to buy the OEM, especially when you're trying to displace trucks. Excellent. <clears throat> so there's a greater profit going after market, and in the case of the medic, you have a very solid product that has a very strong warranty it's, and it's very strong because we know how good a product it is as long as it's been in the market I understand you really have had no warranty claims on it so far right? We have had warranty claims but the amount of warranty claims versus the product that we produce on a yearly basis it's minimum it's very very minimum. Very good and so uh, now I know that Dometic has put together and you and your team have put together uh, a very attractive prob uh, program that basically makes it a no-brainer for an interested dealer. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us about it and we'll start wrapping up. This is the way the program works. This is a no-risk um, program. It's available only to 30 companies. Um, the way the program works is you buy, the, you place an order for the product. You don't pay any money out of pocket. Once you receive the product, our team is going to show up at your dealer. They're going to train your counter people, your salespeople, on how the product works, what are the options, how it works, how to compete with other options that are out there. We'll also train your installers how to put the system in. You don't need to have a master AC technician. You don't need to have a Certified technician per se. Any technician that works at your shops existently will be able to install this product in any truck that's out there. Um, once you've gone through the whole product training, we we'll allow you to market it, try to get some sales out of it. If by the end of this year you return with zero sales, you send us our unit back, we we'll give you a thank you, and we move on, and you move on. Um, so there's basically no risk. Okay, and how can they possibly end up getting the demo unit for free based on the sales run? There's 
you got to send an application. We're going to review because we we have a large um, ground to cover. Um, once we get the application, we'll contact you. We'll give you more details of the product. It will be a secondary webinar. Um, and at the end of it, if you still want to continue to go forward, we'll be shipping your unit. Okay, very good. So we're coming up here on the end. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to type them into the chat section here on the right hand of your screen. In the meantime, I want to also direct your attention. In the lower right hand of your screen, uh, you'll see a yellow button that says Get Started. Uh, you can apply today, and there, remember, there's no obligation. By you applying today, you're basically telling us, hey, I'm interested in discussing this further. I understand there's no obligation. And likewise, it isn't guaranteed that you will have a spot in this introductory program. It's at the discretion of the medic based on a whole bunch of factors that we'll share with you. In subsequent briefings, you will learn more about the product line and the benefits of going with the medic versus all the other options. For today, we certainly invite you to click on the Get Started button and basically leave us your contact information so that we know you have further interest to speak with Fernando or someone from his team and uh, we'll follow up with you. Uh, no pressure, no obligation. We certainly welcome your interest and there are only 30 spots in, in the program. We have well over three to 4,000 qualified dealer service stations out there from all the brands. So it's on a first-come, first-served basis. It may fill up in the next couple of weeks. It may take, take us a little longer to do that, but we will fill it up. So at this time, uh, I don't see any questions coming in, and we did want to stick to our 15-minute. Uh, Fernando, is there anything you want to say in closing? No, just thanks, everybody, for coming. And if there's any questions, please go ahead, send them in, send them with your application, and we'll be more than glad to address them properly. Excellent. Thank you for your time today, Fernando, and to our viewers, thank you for your time as well. All the best.